All right. So um, yeah, so on Monday, actually, I, I talked about this uh, area problem, right? So let me just remind you quickly the, the problem um, uh, we had on Monday. So uh, we have this uh, continuous function. So uh, f of x, so f of x is uh, a continuous uh, function on uh, the interval a, b uh, on uh, the interval on the interval uh, a, b, right? And uh, so uh, we want to um, measure the area bounded by, you know, so this is your, so let's say this is your interval. So this is your X axis, of course, Y axis. So you have your A and B, this is a, your A and here's your B. And then you have a function F from A to B. So let's say here's F of A, here's F of B and here is uh, f of x. So this is your f of x uh, from, so this is uh, f of a and this is f of b, right? Anyway, so uh, the problem is, so we have this region bounded by the graph of, so this region s bounded by the graph of f of x and uh, your interval a, b, right? So we have this region here, this region s, all right? And we said we want to compute, so the problem is we want to uh, find the area, the area of uh, the region S. Okay. Again, this region S is bounded by the graph of f of x and the x axis, bounded by uh, the graph of f of x and the and the x axis. Right. So we said the idea would be. Uh, uh, would be to approximate uh, the, the, the area of uh, the region S uh, using uh, N uh, strips, right? So we said we would divide uh, the interval AB into N sub intervals of equal width, right? So we said the, uh, to approximate, uh, to approximate the area of S, the area of S, we, uh, so we divide uh, our interval, uh, the interval AB into uh, N, let's say N sub intervals. Okay, so we're gonna have like, you know, uh, n sub intervals. So n is just uh, some, uh, you know, some uh, positive uh, home number, right? It could be like ten sub intervals or one hundred sub intervals. Uh, all right, so just a, a home positive home number. So for example, here I'm gonna divide my interval a b into so one, two, three, four, five, six uh, sub intervals, right? Of equal width, right? So this, let's say here, this is X one, uh, X uh, subscript two, X uh, subscript three, subscript four, and then X subscript five, right? So you see here, guys, we have like six uh, sub intervals, uh, one, two, you know, um, the uh, four, and then here's five, 
and then six, for example, right? So here, uh, six, right? Now, the thing is, of course, as I said, so and some intervals uh, of equal width, right? So the, their length is the same, okay? So the length of the, so the sub intervals is, uh, uh, is the same. So of equal, of equal width, and the width of each subinterval, uh, we denoted the, 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 the width of, uh, uh, of the subintervals by uh, delta x, uh, delta x, okay. So, uh, so you see this uh, uh, triangle, guys? So this is actually uh, a capital delta, okay? That's a Greek letter, right? This is a capital, capital delta. Okay, so the triangle, that's, uh, that's called a delta, okay? Delta X, capital delta X, right? Uh, that's the width of my subintervals, and it's equal, so we said it's just uh, we divide our interval into n subintervals, right? So I'm going to divide the length of the length of my interval from A to B, uh, we said it's uh, B minus A, right? That's the length of my interval. And, and I'm, I'm gonna divide it by N sub intervals. So I'm gonna divide the B minus A by N. Uh, no problem, Robert, I got you, thank you. So the delta, uh, that's the, my delta X, that's the width of my sub intervals. Now the X I, the X uh, subscript I, so for example, X1, you know, here I have x1, x2, x3, etc. So the x uh, subscript i would be equal to. So x subscript i is equal to a plus uh, i times delta x. All right. So that's because, guys. I mean, it's very simple. I mean, it's just a. Uh, uh, you know, um, probably I'm gonna, I can, I can do bigger, a bigger picture here. Uh, you know, you have, this is, you know, this is your A, this is your B, right? And here's, for example, this is X1, this is, let's say, X2, this is X3, this is X4, et cetera. And what I'm saying is the length of each sub interval is delta X. So this is delta X, this is delta X, delta X, x delta x right now for example if you take so what i'm saying here x subscript i equal to a plus i delta x it means that for example if you take uh, so what would be x1 well x1 it's a plus the delta x right so uh, x1 it's a plus one times delta x uh, if you take x3 well, here's x3, right? This is x3, right? Here's x3. So how, how can we get x3? Well, you start from a, right? You start from a, and then you had have one delta x, two delta x, three delta x, and then you get x3, right? So x sub, subscript t, it's a plus three times delta x, right? Et cetera. So you, you see how it works, right? Uh, it's very simple. Uh, so well, that's my uh, xi, right? Now uh, we said. So actually, so we're gonna define uh, the definite integral. So this is the definition of a definite integral. So then, the definite integral. Definite integral. of f of x uh, from a to b is, so here's the notation for the definite integral. So we have like, you know, we have like a sort of a capital S, right? So this is the notation for uh, integral. Okay, you have this like a capital S, sort of capital S, all right? And now uh, uh, the lower bound, uh, so you have your interval AB, right? 
So this uh, definite integral is defined over the integral a, b. So in the bottom, I'm gonna put a, and in the top, I'm, I'm gonna put b, right? Because uh, my interval is a, b, right? I go from a to b, right? So uh, I have this uh, bounds a and b, okay? And, and then I have f of x, all right? And then there is uh, dx. Okay. Um, so, I mean, this, uh, well, fx, of course, that's your function. This uh, dx here, this stands for, um, you know, that's, this stands for the delta x. So you see here, when I say delta x, delta x, that's the difference between, that's the distance between x1 and a, for example, right? So this delta x is sort of, you know, the difference between, let's say, x1 minus a. So it's like sort of the difference between the axes, right? Uh, the difference between two consecutive axes, like x1 and x2, the difference is this delta x, right? So the distance between x2 and xt is delta x, right? Et cetera, et cetera. So this dx, it stands for the, you know, the, the, the difference between the axes. So that's the variation of, or the rate of change of x, okay? So this is a rate of, change of x, okay? Uh, in other words, this, uh, that's the, the delta, delta x, right? Anyway, so this dx comes with a notation, right? So uh, this, you know, this, um, uh, this capital X, uh, capital S here, this sort of capital S with the dx, that's the notation for, uh, for integral, okay? Uh, so this is just a notation for notation for uh, of uh, the definite integral. Okay, so this definite ant integral, it's by definition, it's defined as this is equal. So this is uh, the definition is equal to the limit when n goes to infinity of uh, the sum. So n goes to infinity, I'm probably zoom out. Okay, n goes uh, to infinity of uh, the sum of uh, f of uh, xi times uh, delta x. So i going from one to n. All right. So we said the last uh, Monday, we said on Monday that this is, this is what we call a Riemann sum. All right. This is our Riemann sum. All right. And so when n goes to infinity, uh, this, this limit of this uh, Riemann sum, that will be exactly equal to the, to the area of our region S. Okay, so the, the claim is that, so then, so then, uh, so this, so this uh, integral of f of x from a to b uh, dx, this is actually uh, the area is equal to the area of the region S. Okay. So, so what we have to keep in mind, guys, so what, what we have to memorize. So when someone asks you, what's the, an integral? Well, you can say, uh, um, so the interpretation or the geometric interpretation of the integral, it actually it measure uh, the area of the the area of the of the region uh, bounded me, by the function f. Excuse me. Excuse me, professor. Um, yes. what does that yeah. say under where it says nine n to infinity? Was this r i e m? Oh, so this sorry. Yes, this is this is i. Uh, I, 
going from one. So uh, I, it's an index. Uh, so it's, uh, it goes from one to N. That's I equal to one there. Okay, and what's the word seen on the bottom, the arrow then? Um, you mean that that's, uh, that's a Riemann, Riemann sum. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't sure. see. Sure. That's a Riemann sum. Um, so Riemann, Riemann that's, uh, as I said on Monday, Riemann is uh, the name of uh, a very famous uh, uh, German uh, mathematician from the 19th uh, century, uh, Bernard Riemann. Okay. And uh, yeah, so it's called after uh, his name. So this, um, well, um, so let me give you a, a numerical example, right? Um, okay, so let me just, uh, this is f of x, of course, here. This is f of x, okay? So let's have a numerical example. I think I did one example last, uh, um, uh, uh, on, on Monday, but let me just uh, do one more example, okay? And then we'll see a, a easier way to compute this uh, uh, this definite integral, right? I mean, because here with this definition, this is like the first definition of the integral. And uh, you see guys, like so like uh, the definition of the derivative, uh, the first definition of the der derivative was, uh, you know, with the, with the limit. Remember we had we said the derivative is equal to the limit h going to zero, blah, 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 right? So the same thing for integral, actually. Uh, so the integral and the definition of integral, an integral is a limit, right? You see here, um, there's this uh, limit here. So an integral is defined as a limit, okay? And um, so, okay, so now let me, uh, let me do a numerical example. Uh, Example. Okay, so let's say you want to compute the definite integral, uh, compute uh, definite integral, let's say uh, from one to three. So again, this capital S. This is like notation for the integral, right? And then one three, that's the, the interval. So the, your integral goes from one to three, right? Uh, let's say the function is, let's say two X minus five, right? And then, as I said, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a part of the, of, the, of the notation of the integral. Uh, there is this uh, DX, okay? So don't forget the DX in, inside the integral. So you have your function f, there is this function f, this is your f of x, all right? And as a, uh, so in this notation of integral, so we have this function inside the integral, we have this f of x, and then you have to put this uh, dx at the end, right? Uh, anyway, so what does, it, what does this uh, 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 definite integral uh, represent, right? So what's the meaning of this integral? Well. So if you wanna, let's say you wanna uh, visualize this integral or the representation of this integral. So this is just, so all I'm saying here is that I have, you know, I have this interval one phi. This is one, this is phi here. Of course, this is my X axis, right? And I have this function F uh, equal to two X minus five from one to phi. All right, so this is, here's my function f of x. This is my f of x equal to 2x minus five, all right? And then, uh, so then this, this uh, integral, okay, would represent, so that would be the, the area of this region, you know, bounded by this function f and your x axis, okay? So this is exactly, so the area of this region so the area would be exactly my integral. It's one three, you know, uh, two X minus five dx. All right. So does it make sense to you guys? So you see that's uh, 
that's the interpretation of the integral. It's just uh, the, the area of the region bounded by the graph of your function f and the x-axis, all right? Now, okay, so this is just the notation and the interpretation. Now, how do we compute uh, explicitly this uh, integral? So, of course, first, I'm gonna show you this, uh, how to compute this using this definition with the limit, right? Uh, uh, it's gonna look like a kind of a complicated, right? But then we'll see uh, after this, an easier way to compute the, this integral. It's like uh, for the derivative, right? So the derivative, we started with the, the, the definition with the limit, right? We had to compute a lot of uh, limits uh, and sometimes very complicated limits, right? To find the derivative. But then we come up with uh, this, uh, these, uh, those formulas for the derivative, right? So then, you don't have to compute any limit, uh, no limit anymore, right? So it's just uh, about some formulas, right? So the same thing for the integral. So this is the definition of the first definition of the integral. Uh, it's, a, it's a limit, right? But then we'll see, uh, we're gonna have uh, formulas uh, and we're gonna have like easier way to compute this integral, right? But let me show like in this example, uh, if you wanna use, uh, you know, uh, just uh, if you want to do it like for fun uh, and you want to compute this integral using the limit definition, right? Uh, so what does it say the definition? It says this integral would be limit and going to infinity, right? A sum of f of x i delta x, right? So first uh, in this definition, I have to find, so what's the, so first question is what's delta x? in my example, all right, first question. A second question is what's xi in my example? Next, what will be f of xi, right? And then I have the sum and then I have to take the limit, right? So first, what will be delta x? Well, delta x, we said uh, it's just, so you, you divide your interval into n sub intervals of equal with uh, delta x, right? And delta x, it's by definition, uh, delta x supposed to be equal to b minus a, right? Divided by n, because you wanna divide equally your interval into n sub intervals, right? So you divide by n. So this is uh, b minus a, so b of course, so that's just uh, your interval, right? So and this is supposed to be A, this is supposed to be B. So if you do B minus A, it's just, uh, you know, three minus one over N. And N, it's of course, because the N, you keep the N because uh, later you're gonna compute the limit when N goes to infinity, right? So you're gonna just keep the N because later you're gonna compute the limit N going to infinity and then you're gonna get some number, right? So you're gonna just keep the n, so it's three minus one over n, <clears throat> which is of course uh, two over n. So that's my delta x in the definition, right? Now, next thing in, in the definition is the, the xi, right? We said, the, what will be the xi? So we had the formula for xi. xi, we said it's supposed to be, you know, I divided my interval into, and sub intervals and, and the distance between two points, it's a delta X, right? This is the delta X, this is delta X, delta X, delta X, etc. And then each point that, so first point would be X1, uh, X2, X3, et cetera, right? So we have the formula for XI. So when we said XI, it's just A plus I times delta X, all right? So what's A? A is one, right? That's, uh, well, A is one, right? Uh, it's just uh, uh, here, A is one and B is three, of course. So A is one, so that would be one plus I. Well, I mean, I is the index of X. So I'm gonna just keep the I times Delta X. Delta X, we said it's this uh, two, two over N. All right, so my, my XI, in other words, my XI is equal to one plus uh, 2i over n, that's my xi, all right? So you see, it's uh, just a, it's just a formula and then you have to apply your formula to your interval. Now, uh, what's the next thing in the 
in this definition uh, of, uh, of integral. You have f of xi, okay? So what's f of x? Well, f of x is given in this problem. So f of x is this 2x minus five. That's my function f, right? This is, uh, you see here, this is my f of x. f of x is 2x minus five. That's my function, right? So, uh, so my function here is f of x. So f of x, it's just, come on. So f of x, it's just uh, the two x minus y. All right. Now, what will be f of so in the in the formula I have in the Riemann sum, in the Riemann sum I have f of x i, right? So what's f of x i? I mean, this is f of x. It's not f of x i. Now I want to compute f of x i. So I have to substitute x with xi, right? This is, here's my x. And I have to substitute x with xi, right? Uh, this x here, I'm going to substitute x with my xi. So it's 2 times xi minus y, right? But now, what's xi? Well, xi, it's uh, this 1 plus 2i over n. So f of xi is actually two times uh, one plus two i over n, right? That's my xi. You see this xi here? So here's my xi, right? It's uh, the one plus two i over n. And then there's minus five, it's minus five. All right, so uh, in other words, uh, this f of xi would be, so if you expand, so two times one, it's two, plus uh, two times two i, that's four i over n, minus five. So then uh, f of x i, uh, so we have two minus five, two minus five is a uh, negative three, plus four uh, i over n. Okay, that's my f of x i. All right, so I got my f of x i. So now I can compute, try to compute my integral. So now let's come back to the definition of the integral. So we said, so this integral, so definition. So we have this integral from a to b, two uh, x minus five. That's my function f. This is again my function f of x uh, dx. We said it's by definition a limit and going to infinity, a sum i going from one to n, all right, from of f of x i times delta x. Okay. So I'm going to just replace. So this is a limit and going to infinity. I have this uh, summation, right? i going from one to n. What's f of x i? Well, here's my f of x i. Right, it's this uh, minus three plus four i over n. So I have minus three plus four i over n, right, times delta x. All right, so I have to multiply by delta x. And what's delta x? Well, delta x is just the uh, here. Uh, delta x is the, you know, the two over two over n, right? That's my delta x. So here I have to multiply by two over n. That's my delta x. So times two over n. Okay, so again, guys, this is this is here, this is f of x i. And this, this is my delta x. Okay. Now, um, so let's multiply. So this is a limit and going to infinity. Uh, we have this uh, sum i going from one to n. So minus uh, three times two over n. So, uh, so I'm gonna distribute, right? So this minus three here times this two over n and then this four i over n times two n. So minus uh, three times two n So that will be minus uh, six 
over n uh, plus, and then four times two, that's eight. So that's eight i over uh, n times n, that's n squared. Okay. Now, the question is, what's this, uh, uh, you have this uh, sum, right? So the question is, what will be this uh, sum here? Right, uh, I have a sum i going from one to n, right? So for example, when i is equal to one, so let's see what, uh, what this uh, sum looks like. So let's see. Um, so we have, of course, uh, we have this uh, limit and going to infinity, right? And now let's see what will be the sum here. Okay, so uh, this uh, summation guys, how, how it works? Well, first we said uh, we replace i so i is an index going from one to n, right? So first you replace i with one. So if i is equal to one, we're gonna have minus six over n plus eight times one over n square, right? Plus, right? You're gonna have plus. Now, when i is equal to two, when i is equal to two, just replace i by two, right? So I'm gonna have my, again, minus, minus uh, six over n. So I'm gonna have minus six over n plus eight times two over n square. All right. Next plus when i is equal to three, right? So when i is equal to three, uh, we're gonna have, uh, you know, uh, minus uh, six over n plus eight times three over n squared, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Then, and the last index is when i is equal to n, right? So the last one, so this is et cetera, et cetera. And then the last, so last index is n, right? You start with i equal to one. So you replace i by one, then i by two, then i by three, Etc. until you arrive at uh, n. So when uh, the last index is when i is equal to n. So when i is equal to n, we're gonna have again minus uh, six over n plus eight times n over n square. Right? Is there any question, guys? So you see this? Uh, why I got this uh, sum? Right, because each time I replace i, uh, you know, by uh, by one, and then by two, and then by three, etc., until uh, last one, which is last index, which is uh, n. Does it make sense? The summation. Right. Now, I want to compute this uh, this sum. Right. Now, first, you, you see there is this. Uh, minus uh, six over n, right? There's this, you see this minus uh, six over n, minus six over n, minus six over n, et cetera, et cetera, minus six over n. So how many minus uh, six over n do we have? What do you think? How many minus six over n? Three? Mm, not, not three. Four? No, 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 not four. Actually, remember my index i, see this index i? It goes from one to n, right? So here I replaced i by one, and then I replaced i by two, and then I replaced i by three, et cetera, et cetera. And the last index was when I replaced the i by n, right? And then each time I have this minus a six over n, minus six over n, minus six over n. So because my index i, you see it goes from one to n, so I have to replace i, you know, like n times, right? So I'm gonna have n times minus uh, six over n, okay? So we're gonna have n times minus uh, six over n, okay? So, uh, okay, let me write it down here for you. Uh, because you see here, I didn't uh, hear, you see these dots? Okay, 
This is when I replace I by three, and then I replace I by four, and then by five, et cetera, et cetera, until I arrive to the last index, which is N, right? So this, these dots, guys, means uh, et cetera, right? Until you arrive to the index N. And n is just uh, you know it's just uh, some uh, uh, some whole number right n for example it could be ten so which means I have to replace i by one by two and then by three by four by five six seven eight nine ten and I'm gonna stop when uh, when uh, i is equal to ten is you see what I mean so I'm gonna have like n uh, I'm gonna have like ten uh, terms right I'm gonna have like ten uh, terms so then it means I, I'm gonna have n times this uh, minus uh, six over n. Now, what about, so let me just write it down here. So again, this is the limit and going to infinity. So we said we have this uh, minus, uh, minus six over n, n times. So it's times n, all right. Now, what about the rest? Uh, here, the rest guys, you see there is this, uh, there's this eight over n square, eight over n square, et cetera, et cetera, eight over n square. So this eight over n square is like a common factor, right? So this is eight times eight over n square times one, eight over n square times two, eight over n square times three, eight over n square times four. And then the last one would be eight over n square times n, right? So this eight over n square is like a common factor. So I'm gonna factor out the eight over uh, n square. And if you factor out eight over n square, you're gonna have here, you are left with one. So here's my one. Here, there's a plus of course, so it's plus. And then here, it's uh, you are left, if you, if you pull out a eight over n square, then you are left with two here. So here's my two the et cetera, et cetera. So it's gonna be like plus three, it's gonna be plus four, plus five, et cetera, et cetera. And then until uh, I, I stop at uh, last index, which is N, right? So here, this is et cetera. Okay. So we we're gonna have eight over N squared times one plus two plus three plus four plus five, et cetera, plus N, right? Now, the question is, what's one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus et cetera plus N? So we discussed this uh, on Monday, right? Remember guys, uh, I had this example with one plus two plus three plus four plus, uh, you know, until we stop at let's say 100. And uh, we said, if, you, if we write the sum like backward, um, uh, so remember, what I said uh, on Monday. So let me just remind you here quickly. Cool. So if let's say you have a sum and it goes from, let's say from one plus two plus three plus four plus five plus six, et cetera. So this is et cetera plus N. All right, so I'm gonna write the sum again, but backwards. So I'm gonna start with N and uh, before N we have n minus one, before n minus one, you have n minus two, and then et cetera. And the last, it's backwards, so last number here would be one, right? And we said, if we, if you take the sum, so this is a plus here, plus here, plus here, plus, and plus. So one plus n, that would be n plus one, two plus n minus one, that's n plus one, right? Et cetera. So we're gonna have, this is a sum, S capital S plus capital S, that's two times my sum equal to N plus one plus N plus one, you know, et cetera, plus N plus one. And we said, we're gonna have N times N plus one. So this is uh, N times, right? And we said times, so my sum or two times my sum would be equal to uh, n plus one times n, right? Because it's n times. So then uh, the sum uh, of uh, one, uh, so my sum, one plus two plus uh, three, et cetera, plus n, 
that would be equal to n times n plus one over two, right? That's what we said on Monday, right? We discussed this on Monday, right? So, uh, so I'm gonna use this for my integral here. So this one plus two plus three plus, so this thing here, one plus two plus three plus four plus et cetera plus n, this is n times n plus one over two, all right? So then, okay, so then I can co compute my limit. So I have, uh, okay, so back to the limit. Right? So I have this definite integral from one to three, you know, two X minus five DX. So it's actually limit and going to infinity. So we have this minus uh, six over n times n. So it's minus six over n times n plus eight over n squared times, and uh, that will be, we said that will be uh, this uh, one plus two plus uh, three, et cetera, plus n, n times n plus one over two. So this is n times n plus one over two. All right, so now everything is in terms of n and uh, actually uh, here we can simplify this is, uh, n here. So, um, uh, so this n here in the top, this n here in the bottom, they cancel out, all right? And so we're gonna have a limit and going to infinity. So we have minus six, right? N cancel out plus, and then we're gonna have uh, here. So uh, eight over N square times, this is N times N plus one. So it's N square plus N over two. All right, so we multiply. Uh, so this is limit and going to infinity. So we have minus six positive infinity, of course, minus six plus, so eight times n squared, it's eight n squared plus eight times n, it's eight n over two n squared. All right, now, what will be the limit of this? Uh, well, with this minus six, that's, um, um, there's no problem with that. We have uh, this minus, negative six. Now the question is, uh, what about this? What will be the limit of this when n goes to infinity? Remember guys, uh, we had this, um, you know, when you have rational, rational function, like a polynomial in the top and polynomial in the bottom and your X or N or whatever goes to infinity. So all we have to do is to compare, you know, the, the highest power of X in the top with the highest power of X in the bottom, right? Or here in our case, we have N, not X, but it doesn't matter X or N. It's, a, it's just a letter, right? Um, so we compare the, the, the highest power of X or N in the top with the highest power of N in the bottom. So the highest power of N in the top, of course is two, in the bottom is two. So in that case, so when you have the same, uh, same uh, degrees, uh, same highest power in the top and the bottom, then the limit when N goes to infinity is equal to this ratio here. So this eight over two, right? So here, this limit, when n goes to infinity, it's equal to eight over two, all right? So, so this is equal to minus six plus eight over two, all right? Which is of course, so a minus a six uh, plus four, that's equal to a negative two. So then my integral from one to three of uh, 2x minus 5 uh, dx, it's actually minus 6 plus 4, and it's equal to a negative 2. All right. So you get a number. So that number, that's exactly your, uh, that's uh, your uh, uh, integral, right? So when you have a definite integral, guys, uh, so the answer should be a number, right? I mean, in, in theory, this number is supposed to, 
uh, you know, represent the, the area of uh, some surface, right? Uh, so yeah, so the answer should be a number. When you compute the limit, uh, your, your, your answer should be a number, right? Any, any question, guys? So you see how we compute this uh, definite integral using this limit uh, definition uh, with this uh, Riemann sum. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's not easy uh, in general, okay? But of course, uh, uh, in, in uh, probably in 30 minutes, we will see some formulas, uh, an easier way, an easier way to compute this integral, okay? Instead of using this limit. But I mean, this is just for your, you know, uh, you need to know that uh, an integral represent uh, this, uh, the, the area of this uh, region. And the first definition is actually given with the, uh, uh, using a limit, limit of this uh, Riemann sum. Anyway, so before the formulas guys, uh, and uh, uh, before the formulas, so again, let me give you some uh, properties of this uh, definite integral, right? So, <clears throat> um, So uh, properties of uh, the definite integral. Okay, so first property is that, so let's say you have an integral uh, from a to a of f of x dx. All right, so here the interval is just the, I mean, the interval a, a. So it's just a point, it's just, a, the interval here is just a, right? So any guess guys, what will be the, this definite integral from a to a of f of x dx? Okay, no, uh, well, um, okay. So if you use the definition, right? Uh, so the definition says like, you have this limit, wherever, you have this uh, summation, uh, who cares? And this is this f of x i, right? And then there is delta x, right? Remember this delta x supposed to be, um, you know, this delta x supposed to be uh, b minus a over n, right? That's the, the width of your sub, sub uh, uh, strips, right? There's the sub intervals. Now, uh, what we are saying is that uh, in this in this example, I mean in this uh, in this uh, particular example, a to a, yes, I mean. So the thing is, your b is a, right? So I mean, this is your a, but your b here, uh, your b would be a, right? You see here, your b would be a. So this is actually a minus a over n. Right, because the B is uh, is A, right? So, uh, and A minus A, of course, there'll be zero. So this delta X, so what I'm saying is that this delta X is gonna be zero, right? Because it's it goes from A to A. So the length, I mean, the length of the interval is just zero, right? What's the distance between A and A? Well, it's just uh, zero, it's the same point, right? So if delta X is zero, so zero times wherever, f of x i, wherever, it's zero. So the whole thing is gonna be zero. So uh, this integral uh, for, of f of x from a to a is gonna be just uh, zero, right? So, um, so the conclusion here, if you have an integral, so if you have an integral like from a to a of f of x, dx, this is equal to zero, okay? So if the, like, so if the, you have the same bound, if you go from A to A and you wanna compute this integral, then, then it's just uh, zero, okay? Because the, the length of the interval would be zero, right? Make sense? Right, so for example, so what I'm saying guys is, for example, if you have, I don't know, like, you have uh, integral from two to two, I don't know, x squared minus dx, whatever dx. Well, it's if you have the same bound, so then it's just uh, zero, okay? Uh, all right, uh, so this is, 
Uh, okay, that's, this is like first property, right? Now, another uh, property is uh, if you um, uh, if you compare the integral from A to B to the integral of B uh, from B to A. So, um, so second property number two. Now let's say I have this uh, integral uh, from A to B, uh, f of x uh, dx. All right, and then. And on the other hand, so I want to I want to compare this this is a definite integral with the integral from b to a of f of x dx. All right. So let's see what will be the relation between the two the two integrals. Well, uh, again, let's let's just uh, see what happens to the definitions, right? So here, definition again, it's uh, this uh, limit. Oops. So you're gonna have this limit, who cares? Uh, this is summation, who cares? There's this f of x, i, right? And delta x, delta x, this is uh, from a to b, right? So it's delta x would be b minus a over n, right? This is my delta x, all right? On the other hand, uh, this one here, again, you're gonna have a limit, you're gonna have a summation, this is the same function, right? F of x i, but then, uh, so you're so here. You go from b to a, not a to b, right? So if you go from b to a, so then the interval should be a. So that then the length of the interval should be a minus b. So here should be a minus b over n, right? Because again here, uh, so you go from b to a. So that's why we have a minus b. Here we go from a to b, so that's why you have b minus a. Now, so what will be the difference between the two? What will be the, what will be the relation between the two integrals? Any guess? So what's the relation between these, these two integrals? Uh, first integral from a to b and the second integral from b to a, the same function, of course. Well, I mean, the opposite, the opposite. Very good. Absolutely. Very good. So because you see, this is B minus A and this is A minus B. So, uh, I mean, B A minus B is the opposite of B minus A, right? I mean, so B minus A is minus A minus B. Okay. So these two things here, uh, these two things, they are opposite. All right. So the conclusion is that uh, the two integrals here, so the first integral would be the opposite of the second integral. So, uh, so what I'm saying guys, if you ch change, the, change the, the bounds, so if you go from uh, B to A instead of A to B, then uh, there is a minus, they are opposites, okay? So let me write down here. So this property, the, this is very nice. Uh, property so integral from a to b of f of x dx would be minus integral from b to a of f of x dx right and again it's just from the you can see it from the definition i mean it's you can deduce it from the definition <clears throat> right um okay this is nice now next property so Again, guys, this is a very important property. So you need to kind of uh, know these properties, right? So first property we said, if you go from A to A, integral of some function F, that would be just zero. If you change uh, the bounds, then uh, you're gonna get the opposite. Yeah, so you're gonna need the minus. Uh, now, uh, a third property will be the integral of, uh, from A to B of some constant C. Uh, dx. Okay, the c here is a constant. Okay, so you integrate a constant. c is a constant. Okay, uh, any guess, guys, what will be the integral here? x. 
You said X, uh, Ibrahima? No. So the, the, what, what did you say? Yeah, yeah, I say X. Well, I mean, the answer, the answer should be a number. X is a variable, so it can, cannot be the answer, right? Uh, we said, uh, so, so guys, uh, I mean, uh, this definite integral, uh, your answer, it should be a number, it's supposed to be a number, right? So, but so, okay, so if, if you don't, if you don't want to use the, the definition, of course, you can use the definition and compute this integral. Be negative? Uh, nope. So that, okay, so the interpretation, guys, uh, this, so what's the interpretation of this integral, right? So we have this, uh, you know, we have this integral, uh, interval from A to B. So your function here, f of x is just the constant c, right? This is f of x, it's just the constant c. So here's my constant c, and I am saying that my function f is just a constant equal to the constant c. So, you know, it's just uh, this horizontal, this horizontal uh, line, right? This is my f of x, right? It's equal, f of x is equal to c, right? So f of x is a constant, doesn't change, right? Is equal to this constant c. Now, remember guys, what, 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 what we said about the integral. We said it's supposed to represent the, 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 the area of the region, right? Bounded by uh, the function f and the, and the x axis. So here, what will be the region bounded by my uh, function, which is f, uh, my function f, which is a constant and the x axis? Well, because it's a constant, because f of x is a constant, so it's just a horizontal line, right? So we're gonna have a rectangle, right? And this integral is supposed to represent the, 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 the area of the region. So that would be the area of the rectangle. And what's the area of this uh, rectangle? What's the, the width? What's the length? Uh, a, B times C. Well, it's B minus A. Uh, B minus A, that's the, the width, right? The, again, guys, the length of this interval here, it's B minus A. Right? This is B minus A times, uh, so that's my width, let's say, times the, the, the lamp here, this is, this height here, well, this is exactly the C, right? So yeah, uh, Elias, absolutely, that's the C. So the, the length is C, so it's gonna be the, 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 the area of my rectangle, it's gonna be the width times the length, so that's a B minus A times C, right? So, so it's equal to, B minus A times C, All right? So that's the, that's the area of my rectangle. Again, because my function F is a constant, right? So if it's a constant, so it's just, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it, it, you can take, a, if you want, uh, like a numerical example, let's say uh, F of X, let's say F of X is equal to the constant two, right? So uh, what does it mean F of X is equal to two? Well, here is one, here is two. So my output f is gonna be equal to two. So this is my f of x is just a horizontal line, right? And then uh, you take some interval a, b. This is a, b. And so the region bounded by the function f and the, inter and the x axis would be this rectangle. And that's uh, b minus a times the height or uh, the, the length uh, two, right? Anyway, um, so, uh, so what we are saying is that, so integral of a constant, integral of a constant C is equal to C times B minus A. Okay, so for example, and of course, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, you get this. Um, I mean, I explained this because of the interpretation of uh, the integral. But of course, I can also use the the, the definition, right? Um, so before the example, if if I want to use the definition, right? So 
uh, remember, so the definition was, this is so integral AB of uh, the constant C, right? Uh, my F of X is this constant. This is my F of X is a constant C. And so I have this uh, limit and going to infinity sum I uh, going from one to N F of X I delta X, right? That's the definition. Now, uh, this is equal limit and going to infinity. I have this summation, uh, I going from one to N, F of X I, F of X is a constant. F of X is always equal to C. It doesn't really matter what's X I, right? F of X is always equal to C, right? This is, so this F of X I, it's just equal to C uh, times Delta X. And what's Delta X? We said it's B minus A over N. Right, that's the definition of delta x. Now, so we have this uh, summation. Uh, I going from one to n. So let me write down here for you, limit and go to infinity. So when I is equal to one, you see guys here, there is no I, right? In this expression, there is no I, right? So when I is equal to one, I'm gonna get just the same thing. There's no I anyway. So it's just a C times B minus A over N. When I is two, I'm gonna get the same thing. There's no I, so it's just, it's gonna be just the same thing. When I is uh, three, same thing, etc. When I is N, it's just the same thing. There's no I, so I'm gonna just have the same, the C times the B minus A over N, right? now. This is summation. So how many times do we have this C times B minus A over N? Well, my index I goes from one to N, right? So I'm gonna have N times. This is, so this is N times. Right, this is, sorry. So this is just N times. Okay, N times. So we're gonna have a limit and going to infinity, I'm gonna have C times B minus A over N, N times, so times N. Now, there's an N in the top, there's an N in the bottom, they cancel out. So it's just a limit and going to infinity of uh, C times B minus A, okay, and here, there's no N, right? So this limit, it's just gonna be just the same thing. It's equal to C times B minus A. There's no N. All right, so we get the same, you know, the same answer uh, as the, you know, as the, the interpretation of the, the, the geometric interpretation of the, the integral as, a, as the area of uh, this region bounded by the function, uh, the constant function and the x-axis, right? Anyway, guys, so you see, I mean, if you either use the definition or you use just the interpretation of the integral, then you can see that this integral of this constant C, it's just uh, C times B minus A, right? And again, it's just the, the area of the rectangle, uh, of our rectangle, right? Uh, so for example, I mean, if you want an example, numerical example, A numerical example would be, for example, let's say you want to compute the integral from uh, four to seven of uh, uh, two dx. So here your function f is just the constant two. This is your f of x, right? So then uh, this integral would be two times b minus a. So it's a two times seven minus four. So it's just two times three, which is equal to six, All right? So again, this is like my C, here's my C, and this is my uh, B minus A, right? This is A and this is B. All right. Uh, okay, another, uh, another property of the definite integral. So we have uh, now three properties. Now the fourth property is the following. 
property number four. Now, let's say you have the sum of, uh, uh, so A integral from A to B of F of X DX plus another integral. You're gonna start from B, let's say to C, or the same function F of X DX. Okay, and the question is, will be the, so the sum of these two integrals. So first integral, is, it's the same function. We integrate the same function f, but in the first uh, first, uh, an, first integral, we, we go from a to b, and then the second integral, we go from b to c, right? So the question is, what will be the sum? Well, uh, so let's see, uh, what would the interpretation say here? Uh, so if you think of the integral as the area of some region, um, so I have this A, B, C, this is A, this is a B, and here is C, and I have some function F. This is my F of X, okay. So uh, the first integral of f of x from a to b, that, that, will, that will be the, the, the area of this region here, this one here. So uh, this would be the integral from a to b of f of x dx, right? So what I'm saying guys is that, so the, the, the area of this uh, green, you see this uh, green region, the area of this green region, it's given by this first integral, all right? And then I have, uh, so plus, and then I have uh, this integral of the same function. So this is my function f of x, and it's the same function, right? Uh, from b to c. So this uh, second integral would be this one here. That's, uh, this, that's supposed to be the, you know, the area of uh, the region, you know, from B to C under the graph of F of X. So that will be this region here. So this is the integral from B to C of F of X DX, right? So my, my question for you guys, what will be the sum of uh, the area of the two regions? So what will be the area of the, the, of the two regions here? Well, it's just the integral uh, from A to C, right? So here, you're gonna go from A to C, uh, integral of F of X dx, right? So what I'm saying is that the, the area of this green region plus the area, uh, this one here, okay, there's some, well, it's just the, uh, the area of the whole thing, right? And the whole thing would be from the whole thing here. Uh, well, that would be from A to C, right? Okay, so the area from A to B plus the area from B to C, that will be the area from A to C. Of course, under the region under the, the graph of f of x, the same function f, right? Make sense to you guys? You see why? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, all right. So then, okay. So then, the, so what I'm saying is that, so the integral, um, okay. So the integral from um, the integral from a to b of f of x dx plus the integral from b to c of f of x dx, that will be the integral from a to c, the, 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 the area of the region from a to c under the function f, the graph of the function f. And uh, of course, so guys, here be careful. I mean, the position of your B is very important. So first, you go from A to B, 
right? You go from A to B, and then you go from B to C, right? So then, uh, so then the sum would be the the this one here, uh, the region uh, from uh, A to C, right? From uh, from A to C. Okay. Uh, what else? Um, all right. Uh, another nice property of the integral. This is the property number four. Um, so, well, we have so many properties and uh, you, uh, you need all of them. I mean, you need to know all of them. Um, so our next property is the, the following. So uh, I think it's a property number, uh, property number five. Okay, so this is number five. So now guys, if you have some constant, okay, some constant C uh, times F of X dx uh, and uh, a uh, an integral from a to b right so then what i'm saying is that the, then i claim that this integral here of this uh, constant so this uh, c is a constant so c is a constant so what i claim is that i mean if you use a definition it's very easy actually it's not hard to prove that this is actually equal to C times the integral from A to B of F of X dx. All right, uh, because you can just, uh, you can just uh, factor out, you know, you have this uh, Riemann sum and, and all I'm saying here is that you can factor out the C, okay? So uh, for example, uh, for example, Let's say you have an integral from uh, three to five of uh, two times x squared dx, right? Then that would be equal to, so then uh, there's this constant c times, uh, this is constant c times f of x. So we have this constant c here times the function f, which is x squared. This is my f of x, all right? And so what I'm saying is that you can, uh, uh, bring out the, this uh, constant C, so uh, outside the, the integral, right? So this is equal to two times the integral of X squared from uh, three to five, dx, okay? So if you have some con inside the integral, if you have some constant times a function, so you can always uh, uh, bring out the, the, the constant outside the, outside the integral. All right. Um, okay, and we are almost done with the properties. Uh, probably last one, last, last uh, property. Okay, and then, uh, and then we take a break. Uh, property number six, you need to know is that uh, uh, six. So if you have a sum, so integral, from a to b of f of x uh, plus, let's say you have a plus or minus, plus or minus another function g of x uh, dx, okay? So if you have the integral of uh, a sum of two functions of, or the integral of the difference, integral of the difference between two functions, then actually it's easy to prove that this is equal to the integral of the first function, the integral of the first function plus or minus, depends on whether you have a sum or a difference, so plus or minus the integral of the second function. Okay. And again, this is just from the definition. So, uh, I mean, uh, okay, let me just, uh, I mean, it, it's just uh, one line here. Uh, I mean, if you have, so you have this integral AB uh, of F of X, let's say plus G of X DX. So by definition guys, so you have like this limit, you know, who cares, there's a sum. And then you have F of XI, 
you know, plus G of XI, right? That's my function, F plus G, F of XI plus G of XI. And then you have this times delta X, right? Times delta X. Now you can just uh, distribute. So this is limit uh, sum F of XI times delta X and plus G of XI times delta X, right? And then you can just split this into a sum. So you're gonna have like limit sum of f of xi. Uh, sorry, this is delta x. That's not delta xi, this is delta x. f of xi delta x plus limit sum of g of xi delta x. Okay. And so by definition, so this is just uh, the integral of f. So this is just the integral of f of f of x dx from a to b plus, and this is just the integral of, uh, you know, uh, g of x from a to b. Okay. Uh, so all I'm saying is that it's like a for derivative, right? Uh, uh, if you have a sum of two functions or difference between two functions, then the diff then the derivative would be the sum of the derivatives or the difference between the derivatives. Okay, it's the same for uh, for integral, right? So, integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals, etc. Uh, all right. So, uh, just one one more thing, guys, before the 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 break, uh, the last property number seven. I'm sorry, this is uh, kind of long, but um, I, we have to do it. Uh, seven, the last property of the integral is that if you have uh, some, if uh, some function, if f of x is uh, larger than uh, g of x, okay? So f is larger than g, then the integral of f uh, from a to b, okay? is larger than the integral of g of x from a to b. And I mean, this makes sense because, you know, of course you can use the definition, but if you don't want to use the defin definition, you can just, uh, you know, use the, the fact that, um, so the first integral, so we have two functions, right? F and, and g, and I am saying, so or I'm saying here, so this is a, this is b, and I have uh, f of x, so here's my f of x, right? And I'm saying that f of x is larger than g of x, right? So the values, the values of f, they are higher than the, the, values, the values of g, right? And let's say, so this is my g of x, of course, right? Uh, so then, um, then uh, the integral of f of x you know, the integral of f of x is supposed to be the region, the area of the region bounded by f of x, right? So it's gonna be this whole blue region, right? That's, that's, the, that's the, the integral of f of x dx, right? That's the, the, the area of the blue, of the blue region, right? Okay. And again, f of x is larger than the gx. It means that the values of f, you see this, the, the graph of f of x here, it's the, the values of f of x are higher than the values of g of x. Now, the second interval, uh, sorry, second integral, uh, this one here, the integral of g from a to b is supposed to be uh, the area of this region under the graph of g. Right, that, that would be this blue region, right? So, uh, sorry, the yellow region, right? So this is the, the area of the yellow uh, region, right? And uh, because, you know, the function, the values of the function f, they are higher than the values of the function g, then uh, the area of the blue region is gonna be larger right, then the area of the yellow region, right? And that's why the integral of f of x is gonna be uh, larger than the integral of g if uh, the function f is uh, larger than g, right? So just you, you compare, 
you know, you compare the area of the two regions, right? And F is, it's higher than G. So the area uh, under F, under the graph of F, bounded by the graph of F is uh, larger than the area bounded by the graph of G. Anyway, guys, uh, so this is the last uh, property of the definite integral. Uh, I mean, you need to know these properties, uh, uh, you know, they are really kind of really important properties. Uh, but uh, as I said, uh, so in the, after the break, uh, we're gonna see some uh, formulas to compute this, uh, uh, this definite integral without using this limit uh, definition, right? It's like uh, for derivative. Uh, so we're gonna have some formulas and we're gonna compute uh, a very easy, kind of easy way the, this, uh, uh, these integrals. All right, so uh, let's take a break five minutes guys. And then I will continue with this, uh, this, uh, uh, with this uh, integral, right? So uh, break five minutes, guys, I'll be back. I'll be back at uh, uh, 740, okay? So let's have a break of five minutes. Yes, uh, Daniel. Yes. Uh, well, when? When? What? What do you mean by review session this week? I mean, uh, today is the. Um, oh, oh, oh! I, I got you. But uh, I mean, uh, yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't think we can have a review session this week. That's impossible because. Well, because uh, everyone has its own his own uh, schedule, that's impossible. Uh, but uh, next Wednesday we're gonna have a review for the final. All right. Okay, so I'll be back at uh, nineteen forty one.
All right, guys. Um, okay, so let's continue with this integral. So as I promised, we're gonna see an easier way to compute this uh, integral. Um, so this is actually the fundamental theorem of calculus. Uh, this is this is actually section it should be section four point four. Um, so this is the fundamental theorem of. Uh, calculus, right? And so the goal is to so is to have an easier way, easier way uh, to compute the definite integral. So to compute this uh, definite integral you know uh, f of x dx uh, x x uh, going from a to b right um, so so how do we compute what will be this easier way to compute this uh, definite integral? Um, so we're gonna use what we uh, what I call uh, the antiderivative. Um, so so the the antiderivative. This is sort of like uh, like the opposite uh, or the inverse uh, uh, inverse operation to uh, inverse operation of uh, the derivative. So um, um, so a function f. A function capital F capital F of X, okay, is called uh, antiderivative of F anti uh, derivative. So here, antiderivative. So you see this. Uh, the word anti here means like it's uh, the opposite. So this is like the opposite uh, operation to a derivative. Okay, so antiderivative of f of f of x lowercase f. Okay, uh, lowercase f of x on uh, on the interval i. If on the interval i, if um, well, capital F prime uh, of x uh, if capital F prime of of x is equal to lowercase f. Okay. Um, so this antiderivative capital F, um, um, so it's the antiderivative of lowercase f if uh, capital F prime. So if the derivative of capital F is equal to F. Um, so um, so I, before the examples, uh, so let me uh, introduce some notation here. So for this antiderivative, uh, we denote this antiderivative by notation. So this capital F uh, of X, though, this antiderivative, it's uh, denoted by the integral of F of X dx, okay? But without the, the bounds here, all right? So without, without the bounds. Okay, so this capital F, so F, capital F of X is the antiderivative of F of X. Of, lower, of lowercase F. 
Okay. Um, so, for example, okay. So here's some uh, some uh, for examples and uh, formulas. Okay. So uh, formula number one. Right, so um, if uh, f of x, lowercase f of x is equal to uh, x uh, to the power n, then the antiderivative, then capital F of x is equal to x to the power n plus one over n plus one plus a constant c. Right, so because guys, well, uh, I mean the proof because, so where C of course, where C is a constant. Okay, so C could be any constant actually, okay? Uh, C is just a, any, uh, it's a, just a random, or I mean a, a, any constant, this is just a constant, okay? Uh, so, um, so the proof is that, so if you have, uh, I mean, uh, let's say you're capital F. So we, we are saying is, so we are saying that capital F of X is, you know, X to the power N plus one over N plus one plus C, right? So if you compute the derivative of capital F, so if you compute the derivative of capital F, so capital F prime, so let's see what would be capital F prime. So then capital F prime. All right, so, um, so what's the derivative of X to the power N plus one? Well, uh, remember how we compute the derivative of a power of X? You just bring down this power here in front of X, right? And you subtract one. Uh, over n plus one, but n, n is supposed to be a constant, right? So we don't really care about this. Uh, we don't really about, I mean, we don't really worry about this constant, right? Just keep the constant. But then uh, for x, you have to uh, bring down the power and decrease the power by one. So if you bring down the power, so we're gonna have n plus one times, uh, and then you subtract one from the power, right? So it's n plus one minus one over, divided by this constant n plus one, right? We just uh, keep the same constant n plus one plus and derivative of C, C is supposed to be a constant, right? Uh, and derivative of constant by itself is just zero. So it's plus zero. So then this capital F prime, so this n plus one over n plus one, it cancel out. And uh, in the power, we have one minus one, so uh, it just n. So uh, capital F prime, capital F prime, or F prime, capital F prime of x, it's equal to x to the uh, power uh, x to the power n, and that's exactly my function f. This is exactly my lowercase f. Okay. So again, what I'm saying, guys, is that if your function is x to the power n, then the antiderivative it's actually, you have to increase the power by one and you have to divide by n plus one, right? So for example, a numerical example. So that's the formula, right? So what I'm saying is that, so example, so let's say I have f of x equal to uh, x cube, all right? And I want to compute the antiderivative, or actually the antiderivative, or the integral of this uh, f of x, right? So I'm going to compute this capital F. So let's try to find uh, capital F of x, which is, uh, you know, the antiderivative of f of x, right? So then, uh, so what we said is that, um, so then this capital F of x, this integral of, uh, of, of f. Uh, so I'm gonna apply this uh, power rule. So we said it's x, x to the power n. So my n is uh, three, right? So then the antiderivative or the, the integral would be 
x to the power n plus one. So it's x to the power x to the power. Uh, so it's uh, three plus one over three plus one or plus a constant c. So this, uh, so, so this uh, antiderivative or this integral of lowercase f, so this capital F of x would be equal, so this antiderivative would be equal to x fourth over four plus some constant c. All right. So again, so this is our first formula for uh, the integral or antiderivative, right? So this antiderivative capital F uh, capital F of X. Um, so if you have uh, your function F of X equal to X to the power N, then this capital F, this integral or this antiderivative would be X to the power N plus one over uh, N plus one, plus this uh, constant uh, C, all right? That's because the derivative of capital F would be the lowercase f, right? So this capital F is my antiderivative. Uh, so this is for x to the power n, antiderivative or integral of, uh, let's say, uh, uh, the trig function. So this is x to the power n. So next formula, so formula number two. So what about the trig functions? Well, if lowercase f, if f of x is equal to, let's say, uh, uh, cosine of x, then the integral or uh, antiderivative, capital F of x is gonna be equal to, uh, well, it's just a sine of x plus always the constant, okay? So why we have this uh, plus the constant well, because the derivative of a constant is uh, zero. So when you add a constant, it doesn't change the derivative because the derivative of a constant by itself is just zero. So you can add any constant to the, to the integral, right? Because uh, when you compute the derivative, uh, the derivative of a constant by itself is just zero. So it doesn't change. Uh, so it just doesn't change the derivative, right? Uh, so now if uh, your function f is a sine of x, then the antiderivative or the, the integral, then the capital F, the antiderivative or the, the integral would be actually minus cosine of X plus a constant C. Okay, because if what's the derivative, what's the derivative of minus cosine? Well, derivative of cosine is a minus sign and there's a minus, so minus minus will be a plus. So that would be plus a sine of x, right? All right, so all I'm saying guys here is that uh, capital F prime is gonna be lowercase f, right? Uh, the proof, uh, you can check. So check that, we can check that. Capital F prime is lowercase f. Okay, so this capital F is the integral or the antiderivative of this lowercase f. Uh, what about the exponential? Uh, e to the x. Oh, uh, I, for, I forgot something actually, uh, guys, for uh, rule number one, I forgot to say that um, you see here uh, for x to the power n, we said the integral uh, or the antiderivative is the x to the power n plus one over n plus one, right? But there's the one problem here. Uh, there's a problem when n is equal to negative one. Okay, so here, so we can apply this formula when n is different from negative one, okay? Uh, n here different from negative one because um, you know, if, if n is a negative one, negative one plus one here is gonna be zero and we are not allowed to divide by zero, right? So uh, this antiderivative of x to the power n, x to the power n plus, x to the power n plus one over n plus one 
can be can be applied for any n different from negative one. Okay, so we will see what will be the well. We know what's the antiderivative of x to the uh, power negative one. I mean, x to the power negative one. That's one over x. And what's the antiderivative of one over x? Well, it's a natural log of x. Remember, derivative of natural log of x is one over x, right? So then the antiderivative of one over x, it's a log of x or the natural log of x, right? So, um, so this is for the trick, uh, the exponential. Minus t so let's say f of x is uh, exponential of x then the antiderivative or the integral is equal to uh, well derivative of e to the x is e to the x so then the integral or antiderivative of e to the x is also e to the x. Okay, so e to the x doesn't change. So it's e to the x plus a constant c. Right, and um, as I said, if you have x to the power negative one, right, this is a one over x, then the antiderivative capital F of x is going to be just a natural log of x plus the constant c. All right. Okay, guys. Um, so let me show you a couple of examples. How do we? Uh, how can we use this? Uh, these formulas to compute, you know, some uh, definite uh, 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 integral. So, for example. Um, so example, examples. So, um, so let me come back. Uh, you remember we had this uh, example of, uh, uh, we use this uh, Riemann sum. Oops. Uh, oops. So remember we have this example with, let me see, where is it? Um, here, this one here. Uh, remember with this uh, integral, this one here, we said, for example, um, you know, we said, the. Uh, integral of this uh, 2x minus 5 from 1 to 3 is equal to uh, negative uh, 2, right? So let's see if this is uh, true if we use our formulas, right? So we have this uh, 2x minus 5 uh, dx, uh, right? So, um, so we have uh, uh, 2x minus 5 from 1 to 3. So this is our example 1. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna, so I'm gonna compute the integral to x minus five. Uh, uh, so this uh, dx, well, um, probably before the examples guys. So let me just uh, mention uh, the theorem I'm gonna use in this examples. Uh, so before the examples, so we're gonna use uh, the following uh, theorem. So, um, so we have this uh, evaluation theorem. So theorem just to, uh, you know, uh, explain this relation between this antiderivative and our definite integral. So uh, if you have a function f continuous on this interval a, b, all right. And let's say uh, uh, capital F of X is an anti, is the antiderivative, antiderivative of lowercase f. Okay. Uh, then the definite integral 
of lowercase f So then the definite integral of lowercase f of x dx uh, from a to b is equal to uh, the antiderivative capital F of b minus capital F of a. All right. So, um, of course, so the, again, this capital F, this is supposed to be the, the antiderivative, that's our integral, right? So uh, and the, the integral of lowercase f from A to B is just the difference between the antiderivative uh, at B minus the antiderivative at A, okay? So for example, okay, so now let's do an examples. Examples. Let's have a couple of examples here. Um, so let's 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 do this example. As I said, from uh, uh, we uh, we said it's a two x minus five, if I remember correctly, uh, from one to three uh, uh, dx. All right. So I want to compute this uh, this uh, this uh, definite integral using uh, our formulas. So uh, in the the formulas, guys, you can see uh, well, um, you know, uh, there is this x here. This is x power one, right? Now, how can how can I compute this integral? Well, first. Remember guys, we said one of the properties of the integral is that um, integral of uh, difference between two functions, that would be the difference between the two integrals, right? Remember we said uh, integral, um, so here just to remind you the formula we had. So we said integral of f of x minus uh, g of x, that would be integral of f minus the integral of g, right? So here we have this minus, this is a difference, right? So that will be the integral uh, of two x uh, dx from one to three minus uh, the integral from one to three of uh, five dx, right? So again, it's, this is like, here's, this is like my f and this is like my g. So the integral of f minus g is the integral of f minus the integral of uh, g, right? Now, remember guys, uh, we said if we have a constant integral of a constant times a function, so we have this, uh, you see this constant two here uh, times x. So we said when you have a constant inside the integral, then you can just bring out this uh, 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 constant outside the integral. So. We're gonna have uh, two times uh, integral of x from one to three, right? Dx minus. Now, what's this? What's what will be the integral of uh, five from one to three? Remember, guys, we had this uh, property: uh, the integral of a constant c. Uh, from a to b, right? Uh, we have a constant c, integral of a constant c from a to b. That's, uh, we said that would be the area of uh, the rectangle with, uh, you know, with, uh, with uh, b minus a and uh, length uh, c. So we said that would be equal to c times b minus a, right? So five here is like my c and uh, here's my a and this is my b. Right, so this integral would be just c, which is five times uh, b minus a. So it's five three minus uh, five times three minus one. Right. Now the question is, of course, what will be the integral of x now? So here's the problem here. 
So what's the problem? What's the, the integral of x? Well, here I can use my antiderivative. So this is uh, x to the power one, right? Okay, so that's my, uh, my uh, f of x. So this is, so this is my f of x. Okay, and uh, our theorem says that this, the integral of this function f of x, there will be uh, the antiderivative uh, at, at three minus the antiderivative at one. So this is actually equal to two. So here we're using our theorem. Okay, so this is a two times uh, antiderivative of uh, lowercase f, so uh, capital F of x uh, at, at b, right? Uh, remember here we said, so um, we have this integral of f of x dx. So uh, here I have, uh, this is my function f, so it's x, right? So the integral would be antiderivative uh, at b minus the antiderivative at a, all right? So antiderivative at b, so that's antiderivative uh, three minus the antiderivative at one. Okay, minus five times three minus one, that's minus 10. Now, what's this uh, antiderivative? Well, uh, this capital F uh, is the antiderivative of uh, X. So the question is, what's the uh, capital? Uh, what's the, the antiderivative of x? Well, so here we're so uh, where uh, this capital F of x is equal to so my f of x lowercase f of x is equal to x. So what would be the antiderivative of x? Well, it's x power one, right? So then the antiderivative, it's x to the power one plus one over one plus one plus c, right? That's the antiderivative of, uh, of, uh, of x, x to the power one, right? Uh, x to the, uh, so I'm applying this again, I'm applying this formula with, uh, you know, uh, x to the power x to the power n. So if my function f is x to the power n, then the antiderivative of the integral is supposed to be x to the power n plus one over n plus one plus this constant c. Anyway, so this is, so this antiderivative of x, it's actually x squared over two. Okay, so this is equal to, x squared over two plus the constant c. All right. So let's compute. So what's f capital F of three? Well, capital F of three, uh, that will be three squared over two plus the constant c. Uh, so that's a nine over two plus the constant c and capital F of one, that's uh, one square over two plus the constant C. So that's half plus C, All right? So now uh, I can compute my integral, right? So then my integral would be, so the integral of two uh, X minus five, uh, integral of two X minus five from one to three uh, DX. So that'll be equal to, so we said, so it's gonna be equal to uh, two times uh, antiderivative at three, antiderivative at three, it's equal to nine over two plus C. So it's nine over two plus C minus antiderivative at one, antiderivative at one, it's half plus C. So minus half plus C. Don't forget the parentheses. And then there is this minus 10, right? There's minus 10. Anyway, so that would be equal to, so if you distribute the sign, so it's two times 
9 over 2 plus c minus half minus c and the whole thing here minus 10. So let's see what we get. Um, so it's equal to, uh, well, c minus c, the constant, they cancel out. Uh, 9 over 2 minus uh, 1 over 2, that's 8 over 2. So it's 2 times 8 over 2 and then minus 10. Of course, uh, the 2 cancel out, right? So it's just 8 minus 10 and that would be equal to a negative 2. And that's exactly the answer we, get, we got when we applied this uh, limit definition, right? So we get the same answer. It's in a negative two. All right. So, um, so you see, guys. So that's how we use this antiderivative to compute the, the, the this definite integral. So you have this. Of course, you have used this. Uh, you know these properties of uh, the integral. Uh, for example, if you have a difference between two functions, then. Uh, uh, the integral of the difference would be the difference between the two integrals, et cetera. If you have a constant inside the integral, then you can uh, put the constant outside the integral. And if you have uh, just the integral of some constant, then that would be the constant times uh, your, uh, uh, your, the length of your interval, right? Okay, let's have more examples. Uh, let me do one more example, and then I'm gonna give you an exercise. Professor. Yes. Can I see um, the theorem? The theorem, yeah, sure. So the theorem says that this is, here's the theorem. So you have this function f lowercase and uh, this capital F supposed to be the, the integral or the antiderivative. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the integral of f from a to b is the difference uh, between uh, your antiderivative at b uh, with the antiderivative at a. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. Okay, let me do one more example, guys. Uh, let's say now uh, example number two. Example number two. So let's say you want to compute uh, a definite integral of um, uh, sine of x. Okay, uh, between let's say a is uh, zero and b is pi over two dx, okay? So this is, here's your function f. This is the lowercase f. Here's your function f. This is f of x, lowercase f, right? So what does it say in the theorem? Okay, so the theorem says that this, uh, the, the, the integral uh, from zero to pi over two, so that will be equal to, so the theorem uh, says that that's the antiderivative uh, capital F at B, so at pi over two minus capital F or antiderivative at zero, All right? So where, so where this capital F is the antiderivative antiderivative of f of x, okay? So what's, uh, the, what's f of x? f of x is a sine of x, right? Lowercase f is sine of x. Okay, so then what's the antiderivative? Well, so let's check. What's the antiderivative of sine of x? antiderivative of sine of x, we said that will be here. Um, so you see guys, uh, if lowercase f is sine of x, then the antiderivative, it's actually minus cosine plus the constant. Okay, so my capital F, my antiderivative is minus cosine plus constant. So here, my capital F, it's actually minus cosine, minus cosine of X plus the constant. All right. So let's compute this definite integral. So then, oops. So then uh, 
So this definite integral from zero to pi over two of uh, sine of x dx, that will be, so capital F at pi over two. So uh, that's minus cosine of pi over two uh, plus the constant, right? I, you just plug, you plug uh, pi over two in the, the capital F, right? Here. So it's minus cosine pi over two plus a constant. And then we have minus, right? This is the difference between the value of the antiderivative at uh, B and A. So minus, so here we're gonna have minus and then the value of your antiderivative at zero. So that's minus cosine of zero plus C. And don't forget the parentheses. So in other words, we're gonna have minus cosine of pi over two plus the constant minus minus uh, cosine of zero. So that's plus cosine of zero and minus C. So you see guys, the constants here, because you take the difference between the two uh, antiderivatives. So if you have this plus C, uh, then because when you take the difference, it's gonna cancel out, right? So this constant C, it doesn't really change the value. It doesn't change the value of your definite integral. It's gonna cancel out anyway, right? So this, uh, this constant C, you see here, C minus C, it just cancel out. So it doesn't change the value of your definite integral. So now what's a cosine of pi over two? What's cosine of 90 degrees? Well, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Professor. Yes. I have a question. Mm -hmm. In fact, yeah. we can't just ignore C or we have always. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, no, I mean, the, you, you have the C because of the definition of this antiderivative of the, the this antiderivative, this integral. Uh, yeah. but, 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 but in practice, actually, actually in practice, uh, you can just, you can, you can just ignore it because, uh, as I said, you're going to take the difference. And when you take the difference, this constant C is going to cancel out anyway. Okay. And so, I mean, in theory, you have this constant C, right? But when you evaluate your integral, it just is going to just cancel out. All right. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I put the C because of the definition, but uh, as I said, in practice, you can just ignore it. Uh, yeah, so uh, minus cosine of pi over two, that's minus uh, zero and plus cosine of zero, it's one, so plus one. So that's equal to one, all right? Okay, um, uh, well, um, okay, so let me give you an exercise then, guys. Um, so we have to use this uh, formula for antiderivatives, right? So exercise, exercise. Okay, so please try to find. So definite integral, let's say from, uh, uh, from uh, negative one to positive one of, um, Let's say uh, um, uh, x squared uh, dx, all right? Uh, two uh, definite integral, let's say from uh, zero to one of, uh, let's see, of uh, e to the x. Professor, I have a question. Yes. Yeah, sure. So um, negative cosine to um, of pi over two is equal to negative zero? Yes, cosine of uh, pi over two is zero. Cosine of 90 degrees, pi over two is uh, 90, 90 degrees. Pi is 180, 180 degrees, right? Uh -huh. So 180 degrees over two, that's 90 degrees. So okay. cosine, of, cosine of 90 degrees is zero. Mm -hmm. So it's minus okay. zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yes, yeah, so please try to find the, so this definite integral of x squared between negative one and positive one. Right, and then this definite integral of the exponential of x uh, plus, let's say, hmm, so let's say minus two here, uh, uh, dx.
All right, so I'm gonna give you five minutes, guys, to think about this, um, this exercise.
All right, guys, I, uh, I mean, we don't have much time. So <clears throat> uh, for number one, um, so your function f, it's x squared. So you have this integral from negative one to positive one, uh, x squared dx. So your lowercase f or the function to integrate is uh, x squared, right? So then uh, we said, so our theorem says that this is, uh, so that this definite integral would be the difference between the antiderivatives, so capital F uh, at, uh, at B, so at one, minus the antiderivative or the capital F at negative one, right? Now the question is what's capital F? So lowercase f is x squared. So f of x is 
uh, x squared. So then the antiderivative, so then the anti uh, excuse me, what two x? Two? No, two x, that's the derivative. So uh, derivative of x squared, it's two x, but uh, we need the antiderivative or the integral. So the, the antiderivative is like the opposite of, the, of uh, the derivative. So the antiderivative of x squared is the x, yes, Elias, so it's x cubed over three. Uh, so we see here, uh, we said for x to the power n, um, so you see this formula here? So uh, if you have x to the power n, then the antiderivative, it, you have to increase the power by one. So if you, if you wanna compute the derivative, you decrease the power by one, right? Now, if you want to compute the antiderivative or the integral, you have to increase the power by one. And then you have also to divide by uh, the power plus one, right? So if you have x squared, if you have x squared, then the antiderivative would be x, uh, so um, x uh, to the power two plus one over two plus one, right? So. Um, So um, here, so the antiderivative, so this capital F of X uh, would be, so it's X to the power, so it's two plus one over two plus one. Okay, plus there's this constancy. So you always add this constancy uh, because uh, when you derive a constant by itself, uh, it's going to be uh, zero. So the constant doesn't change anything. Uh, yeah, so this capital F, so this uh, antiderivative, so this capital F of X is actually X cubed over three plus this constant C. All right, so then we have to evaluate uh, uh, you know, uh, capital F at one and uh, capital F at negative one. So capital F at, at positive one, so capital F at positive one, it's one cube over three plus the constant. So it's just one third plus the constant. Now F capital F at negative one, it's negative one cube over three plus the constant. So negative one cube is just negative one over three plus the constant, okay? Now, so what does it say our theorem? Say, the theorem says that uh, the definite integral, the value of our different definite integral is gonna be the difference uh, between F of capital F of one and uh, capital F of negative one. So I have to take the difference, right? So uh, this integral, so the answer, so this negative one, to one integral of x squared dx. So it's gonna be one third plus c. Okay, so this is capital F of one, antiderivative uh, at one minus, and then uh, uh, antiderivative at negative one. So that's the negative one third plus c. So then that will be equal to uh, well, one third plus C minus minus, that will be a plus, right? Uh, be careful guys, so we need parentheses uh, for uh, capital F of negative one. So minus minus would be plus one third and minus plus C, that would be minus C of course. The whole way, the constant always cancel out, okay? So if you, it doesn't cancel out, if constant doesn't cancel out, then there's a mistake in your, uh, uh, in your computation, right? So it's one third plus one third, of course. So then the answer, of course, would be just uh, uh, two third. All right. So any question, guys? Again, so, you know, we had the formula for the derivative. Now we have kind of a formula for the antiderivative or for the, the integral, right? So uh, x squared, the derivative would be two x, but the antiderivative or the integral would be x, this x cubed, this, uh, this x cubed over three. So we have to increase the power by one. 
and divided by n plus one. Okay. Um, all right. So for, for number two, number two, we have this e to the x minus two. Okay. So we have this. So number two. So it's uh, e to the x minus two dx. It's uh, from uh, zero to one, right? If I'm not mistaken, yes. So it's from zero to one. All right. So this is equal to well here. Um, I mean, I mean, we know the antiderivative of you know x to the power n. Uh, so, uh, you know, just just to remind you, if we have x to the power n antiderivative, that would be x to the power n plus one over n plus one, right? If you have, uh, we said, if you have cosine antiderivative of sine, etc. If you have e to the x, then the antiderivative is e to the x. Okay, uh, it's the same as uh, for the derivative. The derivative of e to the, e to the x is e to the x. And the integral or antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x, right? So I know what's the antiderivative of e to the x is just to the x. Now minus two. So the question is, what's the antiderivative of this uh, minus two? Well, I mean there are different ways actually to do the, to do this. Uh, I mean we can just say. Uh, I mean, you can use the fact that uh, you can. You can say that the, the integral of the difference will be the difference of the integrals, or you can just say, you know, this is uh, zero uh, integral from zero to one, e to the x, and you can say this is minus two times, well, this is two times one, right? So you can say this is actually two times x to the power zero, right? And we know antiderivative of x to the power zero it's like, I mean, it's like x to the n, n would be zero. So antiderivative of x to the zero, that would be x to the zero plus one over zero plus one, right? That's another way to do it, right? And anyway, um, uh, so this is uh, dx, right? So as I said, um, so we have integral of the difference between these two functions, then we can just say that's the difference between the two integrals. So it's integral of e to the x minus the integral of this two x to the power zero dx from zero to one, right? And then uh, we can say, well, so for the first integral, I know what's the antiderivative of this is a, so this is my function f of x, right? So then uh, capital F of x, antiderivative of e to the x, we just said it's just e to the x plus constant c, right? Right, so, um, okay, so this is equal to, so I'm gonna just keep this zero one e to the x dx, now, let me just say here for the second one, remember one of the properties of the integral, we said if you have a constant uh, inside an integral, so you have a constant times some function, so we, then you can uh, put the constant outside uh, the integral. So this is actually minus two times uh, uh, integral from zero to one of, uh, uh, so of the integral of x to the power zero, okay? Uh, dx. Anyway, so as I said, antiderivative of e to the x, it's uh, e to the x, right? So this is, uh, again, this is my f of x. So then the antiderivative is e to the x uh, plus c. Now for x to the power zero, this is my uh, f of x, let's say. So then cap the antiderivative of x to the power zero it's x to the power zero plus one over zero plus one plus this constant c. All right. Now we have to evaluate. Uh, so using our theorem. So for the first integral, so we're going to have uh, f capital F of one minus capital F of zero. 
All right, then there is this minus here. So here's my minus, there's this two here. So here's two. And then uh, there's this uh, antiderivative, this, the blue one. So a capital F of uh, one minus capital F of uh, zero. Right. Now, what's the capital uh, the, for e to the x? So antiderivative is just the same, e to the x plus the constant. So capital F of one, that will be e to the power one plus c, right? I'm talking about this capital F here, right? e to the x plus c. So minus, there's this minus, so it's minus uh, capital F of zero, you just substitute x by zero, so that's e to the zero plus c. All right, minus two. And here we're gonna have, um, well, this is this capital F, this one here, it's just, uh, you know, x to the power of zero plus one, it's just x over one. So it's just x plus c, right? So if you substitute x by one, so we're gonna have uh, one plus c minus, and then you substitute x by zero, uh, that'll be uh, zero plus c. So it's just uh, minus uh, c, right? So of course the, the c uh, cancel out. So this c here cancel out, uh, this c here minus c, they cancel out and e to the zero, uh, well, it's just one. So here it's e to the power one minus e to the zero uh, minus two times one. So it's just minus two. So e to the power one minus e to the zero, any non-zero number power zero is one. So it's minus one minus two. And uh, so the answer would be e uh, minus uh, three. All right. Uh, now, Elias, you know, you don't have to uh, write the C when you, have, uh, no, no. Um, uh, so if you wanna, uh, when you show your work, you don't have to write the C because I know it's a, it's a pain. I mean, uh, yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, no, you don't have to write the plus C, okay? Uh, it's not worth it. But I mean, I'm, I'm doing, I, I'm, I'm writing plus C here because just, you know, because it's, it's part of the definition. But uh, no, you don't have to do it because that would be too, probably too much. All right, guys. I, uh, I mean, there's only two minutes left, and uh, um, I'm in the last two minutes, last one minute. I'm gonna just uh, mention. I mean, the fundamental theorem of calculus is just what I said. Uh, it's um, uh, so. Let me just mention in one minute this fundamental theorem of calculus, which uh, which is so. It says that the, uh, the, the integral is the opposite operation of uh, the derivative. So the, 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 so the fundamental theorem of calculus says the following, the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it says the following. So we have this function continuous on this uh, interval uh, f of x continuous on this interval a b, right? So what does it say this fundamental theorem of calculus? Well, it says that uh, the derivative of the integral, so we have this integral of let's say f of t dt uh, going from a to x. So uh, the derivative of the integral, okay, that would be equal to just the function itself, equal to f of x. Okay. So, so the idea here of this uh, fundamental theorem of calculus is just to say that uh, you see this, the, the, this derivative and this uh, integral, they just, they cancel out, okay? And so in some sense, uh, the derivative is the inverse operation of, uh, uh, of, uh, of uh, the integral. So if you have a derivative and then and uh, integral, so then they, they would cancel out. And so the, the, the result would be just the function itself, okay? So again, uh, the theorem says that the derivative of the integral, it's just the function itself, right? So uh, f of t dt integral, and then you take the derivative. If you have an integral and then you take a derivative, 
the derivative and the integral, they cancel out and you end up with the same function. So f of x, okay? And so that's the basic idea of the fundamental theorem of, of calculus. It's just saying that the derivative, again, derivative and the integral, they are just opposite uh, operations, okay? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna stop here, guys, uh, I guess. Um, well, I try to do my best to cover this uh, chapter four. There's a lot of to say in this chapter four, but and unfortunately we don't have uh, much time. Uh, so I'm gonna stop here and I guess, uh, well, Monday I'm gonna have a test. So I'm gonna wish you good luck. Um, again, uh, we wanna have a review for the second test. So if you have any question about the review sheet, uh, just uh, email me, okay? And I will answer uh, your questions by email. All right. Uh, okay, guys. So uh, take care and uh, uh, stay safe. Okay. Good night, Happy everyone. Night. Thank you, everyone. Thank uh, you. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Ibrahima. Uh, take care. Good night, Professor. See you Monday. Take care. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Professor. Good luck. Good luck on the Monday. <laughs>